In this video, we bring you 32 counts of choreography as a recap of our weekly classes for the lockdown of the coronavirus. What's up, gang? It's Brian B. And Miss Megan. We are here doing our live videos. This is 32 counts of choreography. It's basically going to be a recap of the patterns that we've taught this week, all crammed together. For intermediate class. For intermediate class, not for beginner class, and not to include East Coast Swing and or nightclub or two-step. But we are going to recap all of the stuff that we did this week into a 32 beat chunk of choreography. This is not easy stuff for sure. Um, really, there's three patterns that we're gonna be covering, but they're gonna be mixed and matched using a rock and go and some stuff. So we're gonna go through this piece by piece. And please give me feedback as we go, because we wanna talk about like what everyone's done for the week, if they've been through this, if it's uh, familiar, and if you have any questions. So let's dance the whole thing. We're gonna dance this twice, actually, because it's gonna be in a loop. So we'll be able to do it from both sides, uh, from both sides. And I'm gonna count it two separate ways. The first time I'm gonna count it just like the patterns, and the second time through, we're gonna count it with straight eight. So that's kind of recapping the musicality. So we're gonna start with a oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. A oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, 13, and 14, 15, and 16, then one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight with an anchor step. So that's the whole set. If we counted it in straight eights, and this is a whole different concept for a lot of people, it's going to sound like this. One, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight. One, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight. One and two, three and four, five and six, seven, eight. One and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. Good, we're out. Did you get that? Good. <laughs> Done. Week's over. That's just a recap. You should already have it. I'm just teasing. So first things first, um, and I want to talk about the base patterns that all of this is built on because we have some really, really easy stuff, really, but built together with rock and goes and some complex uh, ways to link patterns that make it kind of cool. So first pattern, we really have just a run around for one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Even more simply put, you could imagine this as a left side pass, right? That'd be the easiest pattern that you can think about it as. But we're going to combine that left side pass into a run around. So as the leader, I'm going to back out for one, two, three and four, five and six. So what am I doing as the leader? How are we doing, gang? How's our feed? Good, 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 good. So lead wise, I am looking over my left shoulder and I'm walking back for one, for two. I'm gonna check my left foot back for three and step back in the slot for four and we anchor five and six. And because we've got both mics tied up for our coronavirus live feeds for you guys, YouTube, and you guys, Facebook, I'm gonna narrate Megan's footwork. Megan's gonna walk forward for one, two, into a little circle. She's gonna triple around the corner for three and four, and our old fashioned anchor step for five and six. So if we did that again, she would walk a one, two, three, and four, we anchor five and six. Lead wise, here's what's going on. We're still connected in our closed position. This could be the first pattern we do for the, for the dance. Um, we're connected in this hand. Leaders, I'm gonna look over my left shoulder because that's gonna encourage Megan to walk around the corner. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. And all week long, we've been shooting videos both live and not live for our website. And I keep asking Megan to weigh in. What do you think about in this pattern, <laughs> Megan? And I'd say about 70% of the time, she says, I just stick myself to your hand and wait for you to tell me what to do. It's gonna be my new quote. So followers, it's a really good one. She's gonna stick back to that hand, which means I have to go one, two, three, and four, five, and six. First pattern down. We only have three patterns, but the second one, what's that? Oh, I forgot, but we made it harder than that. This is my 31st video of the day. Honest to God, we did 30 videos earlier today. So we're gonna add a little bit to that with the run around. We're gonna lead a tuck out of it. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So we're now combining a tuck with a left side pass with a run around. So lead wise, right? Same footwork, one, two, but I'm gonna check Megan out three and four, five, and six. And she's gonna do tuck footwork around the corner. So that looks like this one, two, three, and four, five, and six. And the only thing I'm doing different, 
I want you to practice this, kind of lean away from your partner, lean close and away. So it's this little out action that's gonna help lead the tuck. We're gonna draw her in for one, two. We're gonna tuck away three and four. She goes under the arm, five and six. How are we doing everyone? So far so good? Is anyone interacting? No, don't type, you're dancing. I get it, we have a Q&A after this, then you can type away. Cool, next part, we're gonna think about this like a tuck, a sugar tuck, right? If I did a sugar tuck, this type of action. Cool beans? But then we're gonna do what's called a sugar, I call it a sugar free tuck, because I'm going to free spin Megan into that tuck. Are you with me, right? That's the base of the pattern. But we're gonna add a rock and go, a reverse whip, a rock and go, and an inside turn. You got it. So I just want you to see the base pattern underneath it. So we have the tuck. We'll do the whole thing all together from this position. One, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight, nine, ten, with a rock and go and an inside turn and an anchor step. How do we get there? Tuck is the first thing I'm thinking. One, two, three, and, but I'm going to make it a free tuck, four, and then we'd normally anchor for five and six. But if we added a rock and go, and the rock and go means, Megan, instead of anchor stepping back, can you do the anchor step back in your left foot? Just anchor step. We're gonna pull her out instead of the anchor step. She's gonna go anchor step forward, and that's what we call a rock and go. And that's gonna let us link right to the next part of the pattern. So that part looks like this. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. So I've taken Megan out onto the left foot. Cool? Awesome. When Megan's on the left foot, we can pretty much access any of the patterns that we know. In this case, it's going to be a reverse whip. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. From here, we lead a reverse whip. Triple step, and normally we'd finish this out walk, walk with a triple step. But this is the coronavirus. We're going crazy. We're going to add in another freaking rock and go at the end of it to link it together with an inside turn. So, we do our sugar tuck. It's a free tuck. We lead the rock and go into a reverse whip. We walk out of the reverse whip, that's not enough. Instead of an anchor step, we're gonna do another rock and go. Rock and go to an inside turn and an anchor step. Holy cow, let's do that again. I'm tired. That's the second pattern, but it lasts 16 beats. Holy guacamole. So, sugar free tuck, one, two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12, 13 and 14, 15 and 16. So if we combine the two of these patterns, we had a debate off camera, what would this pattern be called? And so Emily called it a tuck whip and I kind of debated that, but it is a tuck, it wasn't a debate, I disagree, but it is a tuck <laughs> and it is a whip. Because if we added all the things, it would be a Push, tuck, sugar-free tuck with a rock and go to a reverse whip to a rock and go to an inside turn. So I'll acquiesce to the tuck whip. <laughs> so we'll call this forevermore the tuck whip. One, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Fair enough. How are we doing, Facebook land? We're going stir crazy, I'm not kidding you. I'm, I'm stir crazy, I'm stir crazy from staring at this camera with lights in me and my friends behind me. Oh, and lights. Cool, so we put these two together from closed position, counting just the patterns, not straight eights. We have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, 13 and 14, 15 and 16. Are we good so far? Fantastic, no questions, because we've covered like 85% of what you need to know for West Coast Swing in those two patterns. They're all, their minds are blown. Blown, my mind's blown. <laughs> so, when we leave this turn, finishing out, there's the 87th percent that you need to know. We're gonna connect <laughs> this hand down to get to my right, to Megan's left so that we can lead a free spin. No, it's not a free spin. It's a roll and roll out. No, it's not a roll and roll out. It's a rock and go. No, it's not a normal rock and go. It goes back to closed position. 
It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a bird. It's a plane. How are we doing? That's a great pattern. <laughs> That's a great pattern. <laughs> and like, it's a fantastic pattern. It was not taught in my class. It was the girls' class. <laughs> it was Emily's pattern. Emily's. So we should just call it Emily's pattern. Oh. Emily's whip. The <laughs> tuck whip. We're here to entertain you, and at this stage, we're entertaining ourselves. Entertaining ourselves. If you're watching this after the coronavirus, you probably will understand. <laughs> If you're a child prodigy and you're seven years old and you're watching this seven years after we did it and you weren't alive during this, understand. you won't understand. You might eventually. Keep up the good work. It is all good. We should do videos on like day whatever of it is. virus breakdown. It is. It's, we it is. We don't even know. It. <laughs> we don't even know. If you look back a month ago, I got my hair. We're going to start on this. We're just take up some time. I got my. <laughs> I was in Florida and I got my hair cut and the lady buzzed it, buzzed it, super short, like shorter than I want. Thank God that she did, because if not, I would have an afro by now. So thankful to that lady in Boca Raton, Florida, who had no face because she had so much Botox. True story. True story. Uh, uh, Rolling around that? Let's do the whole thing from the top. <laughs> Run around. We, we can complicate things and count straight eights. We'll do that at the end. <laughs> One, two, three, and four. Five and six, seven, eight. One and two, three and four. Five and six, seven, eight. Why well, don't know what I'm doing? At an anchor 16. step. 16 <laughs> beats. So now I'm going to think that I'm leading. Again, I'm back to my teaching style. I think I'm going to lead a free spin. That would be the base pattern, the free spin. We're here for your entertainment free entertainment. So, but instead of the free spin, I'm going to keep the hand. One, two, three, and four. From here, normally, we would anchor step off of that. No, 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 no. Not in the lockdown of the coronavirus. One, two, three, and four. I'm going to take Megan out into a freaking rock and go. Rock and go. Now from here, I'm going to lead a free spin. No, 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 no. <laughs> We need to end in closed position so we can repeat the series. So we lead what looks like a free spin. No, it's not. It's a roll in, roll out. No, it's not. It's a rock and go. It's a free spin. Oh, no, I have to land in closed position so I can repeat it again. So when I'm doing this, I'm going to try it from this side. When we roll in and we roll out, I have to cross the slot, right? Actually, this is the correct direction. So now when I'm leading the free spin, I'm going to look slowly for the middle of Megan's back. And I'm going to pick it up. Can you go back just a little bit? Anytime I'm picking up closed position, I'm going to put my fingers dead in the middle of her spine. She's going to raise her elbow. She's not going to karate chop me and break my nose. She's going to raise her elbow, and I'm going to lead in and end up in closed position. So there, if you just got that out of it, it would be worth a lesson. So roll in, roll out. Roll out, free spin, picking up the back in closed position lets us do it again from the top. So let's do it once with counts of the pattern. We'll go from this side. We'll go from the good side. Once all the way through counts of the pattern, then we're going to count straight eights and talk about what that's all about. It's about our musicality course. Oh, that's what it's all the about. Whole the whole thing. So we have gotcha. oh, one, two, Three and four, anchor five and six. That was basic enough. One, two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, nine, ten, eleven and twelve, thirteen and fourteen, fifteen and sixteen. Now the roll and roll out. One, two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, anchor nine and ten. Now we're going to do it counting straight eights. Who in TV land knows how to count straight eights? Not in TV land. If you don't know how to count straight eights, you should get our video on how to count straight eights. If that's confusing for you, you should buy our musicality course on everything to do with how to get to counting straight eights and everything to do afterwards. And it just happens to be on sale. But we'll talk about that later. Cool. So if we're counting straight eights and we're now not counting the patterns, we're counting the music. So let's describe that just a little bit. If I did a sugar push, two sugar pushes, I would normally count one, 
two, three, and four, anchor five and six. Then I would start the next pattern. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. However, West Coast Swing Music doesn't stop at six beats. It goes to eight, and then it continues in sets of eights typically. Hopefully. So hopefully. So we would count two sugar pushes this way. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. The music's gonna keep going on seven, eight. Seven, eight, one, and two, three, and four. If we kept going, five, six, seven, and eight. One, and two, three, four, five, and six, seven, and eight. That's what counting straight eights would be. If that's confusing, let my folks behind the camera know, say, that confuses the heck out of me, Brian. I'll make sure I get you a link to our video on counting straight eights. Boom, free for you. So if I did the whole pattern, counting straight eights, it would look like this. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight. One, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight. One, and two, three, and four, five, and six. Walk seven, eight. One, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. So we come back to the one where we start again. That's 32 beats. That's a 32 beat phrase. If you don't know what a phrase is, we have a musicality course. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I really am crazy. 30 videos? Is that what we shot today? 27? 25? It wasn't 30. 30. I put 30 num down on the paper. Well, it's 30 now. It's 30 now. It's a lot of videos. What's our lifetime total? Oh, dear God. I don't God, know. it's going to be in excess of close to 700? Mm. 500 in the courses. Uh, 500 in the videos. Probably another 100 in the courses. And then like another new hundred for the rest. A lot, a lot, a lot of videos. So counting straight eights from this side, we have one, two, three, and four, five and six. Walk seven, eight, tuck one and two, three and four, five and six. Walk seven, eight, anchor one and two, three and four, five and six. Walk seven, eight, one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. Boom, 32 beats. So. That is, in all honesty, that is a recap of everything we did this week. We have a question, please. Um, a couple of people are bringing up, do you only count one, two, or do you do one and two and as you're going through everything? One and two and. So do you count the and, so do you do, even though you're stepping one, two, do you think one and two and as you're moving through the count? Good question. So the question was, do I count like one, two, three, and four, or would I count one and two and three and four? And you can even break that down further to 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a, so if you took, can you get my reader board and a pen? I'll take a moment, don't show my cheat sheet on this side, just, yeah, right, yeah, I'll take it. All right, don't show the cheat sheet. So, actually, can we see that? Oh, oh well, hang on, I'm gonna write this out, we're gonna take the opportunity, it's almost like a Q&A. &A. Can we see? Yeah, it's starting. Or is that gonna glare? Okay, so the question is, if I counted one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Typically, if I put an and in there, I would go one, two, three, and four. What's the and sign? I don't know if that's an and sign, maybe backwards. Sort of. But the and, that's backwards. Close enough. You get the idea, right? So the question was, do I count all of, yeah, that's backwards. Do I count all of the ands? And the answer is no, and I'll tell you why. In the case of this pattern, I'm counting where I'm stepping, right? So if I'm dancing one, two, three, and four, I'm saying I have a step on beat one. I have a step on beat two. I have two steps on three and, three and. So I'm saying those, then I'm counting four, right? So for the sake of this, I'm counting the beats or the part of the beats that I'm stepping on. Now, does this, if I use one beat, one whole beat, and there's the second whole beat, Right? I could theoretically count this one E and a. Uh. So what I've basically done is divided this beat into quarter beats. I'm getting all lecture style. Oh, that's a half. Right? So I theoretically could count that into quarter beats, one E and a, one E and, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a. And what that would basically do is tell me what's going on. It gives me a little beat value to the space of time of that beat. Now in West Coast Swing, we will often count 
and a lot of the West Coast swing teachers, and I, I'm kind of glad I got to explain this, we would count one and a. Uh. That's typical with a lot of West Coast swing teachers would go one and a. Uh. So what I'm basically doing is I'm doing an and and an a. Uh. So theoretically, if I go one and a, two and a, I'm basically dividing the beats into thirds, right? And where does that come from and why do we do that in West Coast Swing? And this is largely, coming back, this is slightly off topic, but if I'm going crazy, let me know. That comes to uh, a concept called rolling count, which would basically say the space of time, like my leg action. If I were stepping back, instead of thinking one, right? If I were to dance and a, uh, that would be the leg action. And would be the leg underneath me. Uh would be the leg preceding me. And then I would step my one. And a uh, two. So if Megan did this coming forward, right? The, can you pop that leg behind me? Behind you, yeah. So if I count and a uh, one and a uh, two, it would be really thinking about the leg action. And a uh, one. And a uh, two and a uh, three and a uh, four. So you have a lot of West Coast Swing teachers that teach it that way. And the reason why is that instead of thinking one, well, something has to precede the one. We're not just dumping on the one. So what's happening is the space of time on the previous beat, five, six, and a uh, one. And then I just don't go two, right? I would dance and a uh, two. So to answer your question long form, it is a good way to think about it, but I don't count it. Not when I, I don't count it when I'm dancing patterns, and I generally don't count it unless I'm talking specifically about leg actions and a one and a two and a three. Because when it gets into half beats, it gets really squirrely to count it that way. I can do it in cha-cha because we use the quarter beats, but West Coast Swing gets squirrely. Any other questions? The question was, can you, are you just going to count it like two-beat increments like you do for a lot of patterns? Oh. I will, so the question was, can I count it in two beat increments like I talk about in some of the videos? And then Emily said we don't have time. I think I got a couple minutes, yeah? Cool. So if I counted these in two beat increments, right, I would go one, two, one and two, one and two, one, two, one and two, one and two, one and two, one, two, one and two, one and two, one and two, one, two, one and two. One and two, one and two, one and two. So yes, that to me would be very useful. Not even articulating it, maybe saying it out loud would be helpful, but the feeling of the two, four, six, and eight, or right now we're counting it down to just two, right? One, two. So that is always going to be a full step, one step, one beat of music. So it doesn't matter how squirrely this gets in West Coast Swing, with rare exceptions, some technical musicality stuff, but from a fundamental pattern perspective, right, we're going one, two, one and two, one and two, one, two, one and two, one and two, one and two, one, two, one and two, one and two, one and two, one, two, am I messing up? <laughs> one and two. One and two, one and two, one and two. So that'd be a good way. And actually, we have a video coming up somewhere over the next several weeks. We're planning out the next month. And one of the videos is literally using that counting two beat increments, using complex patterns as a way to help us to not get lost within the patterns as we're dancing them. Because that's a common struggle, especially with something like that. It can really get away, away from us. Any other questions? Good deal. We are going to go close this down. We're going to come back in five minutes with the team and we're going to do a Q&A. So if you guys have questions, we'll see you back in five minutes. Thanks for going with our craziness. Thanks to Miss Megan, Miss Emily and her tuck whip. And for putting Miss Emily good credit, she put the 32 beats together. It was her idea to use our weekly patterns all in one recap. Um, in future weeks, one of the classes we're going to try to do is to add a video at the end of the week that answers all the questions that we get during the week. So you guys are feeding some great questions in YouTube and email. And to be quite frank, it's too much to keep up with straight away. So keep the questions coming in. What we'll do is we'll collect them. We'll do a video each week where we just randomly answer all the questions. So if you have a random question about a topic, about a pattern, about whatever, 
we will try to recap it in one video per week so you know that you can go to that particular video to get the question that you answered this week so we have a clear way to answer your questions while we have all this free time. Cool? Thanks, team. We'll see you again in five minutes.